Hi, thank you for your kind introduction. I'm Eunsoo Lee, a PhD student from Busan National University of Korea. And I'm, excited, I, I'm excited to present our recent work on the optical phase array via sensors. Uh, before we start, let me introduce a little bit about where I came from. Um, I'm from Busan, the second largest city in South Korea. It has beautiful beaches and skylines. And the, the picture of our uh, right side is our university. It's under, uh, located under a mountain, and it's a good thing that the greens make me happy. And so back to the paper for the outline, um, I'll introduce uh, optical phase array LIDAR and polymer waveguide phase modulators and uh, some materials for efficient OPAs. And, and then followed by the demonstration of the uh, monolithic integration uh, and the beam scanner operation. And then I'll summarize the talk. As we are all aware, LiDAR technology plays a crucial world role in acquiring accurate distance information of 3D objects within a 3D space. LiDAR offers a high resolution 3D imaging compared to the conventional radar due to the short wavelength of light. Um, and um, traditional LiDARs, which mostly rely on rotating mirrors, have made their way into the convention commercial markets, but they still have their limitations on their size, uh, weight, and power consumption, and cost. And this is where optical phase array LiDAR truly shines. OPA LiDAR uh, offers a solid state solution that enhances reliability by eliminating the mechanical components. Instead, OPA LiDAR utilizes optical waveguides arrays that are integrated into a compact chip. Um, and the fundamental principle behind uh, OPA LiDAR is the utilization of phase modulator arrays um, to manipulate the phase distribution distribution of the waveguides. And when all the waveguides are in phase, um, a beam is formed and propagates in a single direction. And um, when additional phase dis distribution is applied, a beam can be steered. An OPA chip typically uh, comprises of an uh, optical source, a power splitter, and phase modulators and beam emitters. So silicon photonics has undeniably been the mainstream of OPA research and the inherent advantages of silicon, such as its high refractive index, enables the fabrication of small waveguides with uh, sub-wavelength pitches below one microns, and this translates into a wide field of view of an OPA. Moreover, the compatibility with the seamless uh, fabrication process has been a major driving force in this area. Uh, nonetheless, one um, critical challenge of the OPA is the nonlinear absorption effects. Um, so, so rendering uh, renders them unable to handle high optical power. Additionally, the high thermal conductivity of silicon can lead to thermal crosstalk among phase modulator, which can result in inability to maintain the initial beam forming state of the uh, beam during beam steering operations. And consequently, a complex lookup table becomes necessary for each beam steering angle, and particularly when dealing with a large num number of uh, uh, channels, uh, the memory becomes a problem. So silicon nitride is an alternative photonic platform for OPAs. They also have the seamless compatibility, as like silicon, and they exhibit low optical loss for wide wavelength band. However, the silicon nitride thermal optic phase modulators consumes too much power. Uh, as you can see here in the table, the TO coefficient of the silicon nitride is an order lower than the silicon of, or polymer. And now let me introduce polymer waveguides uh, phase modulators. And they can change the phase of, phase of light with a microheater placed on top of the waveguide. And they exhibit low power electrical power consumption owing to the high thermal optical coefficient and low thermal conductivity of polymer materials. They are widely used in a variety of applications, such as the optical current sensors and uh, fifth generation WPM tunable transceivers. With the help of the uh, low power polymer phase modulators, our group demonstrated a polymer OPA beam scanner. And one of the notable advantages of our approach is the minimal thermal crosstalk between the adjacent channels. Uh, this means that each channel can be controlled independently and aligned for precise and stable beam steering, as you can see in this video. However, due to the relatively small refractive index difference uh, between the core and the cladding material, uh, the wide, uh, output pitch was uh, limited to 10 microns and 
This makes the field of view of less than 10 degrees. So polymer OPAs have low optical loss and high thermal optic effects, but the scanning angle is too small. On the other hand, silicon nitride uh, OPAs can tightly confine the light and can handle high optical power. Uh, but the phase model layers consume too much uh, electrical power. So to overcome the limits of each OPA technologies, we propose an efficient OPA by exploiting the merits of heterogeneous materials. Um, we propose a monolithic integration of these two waveguides to construct an OPA. Uh, the silicon nitride uh, comprises the power splitter and the emitter and the polymer waveguide produces low power phase modulations. The waveguides were designed for 1550 nanometer wavelength, which has an advantage of eye safety for light, uh, LiDAR applications. Uh, and, and you can see here, the mode sizes profiles of the two waveguides differ a lot in size. So in order to connect these two waveguides with low loss, we designed a tapered waveguide that induces adiabatic mode transitions. Uh, as you can see here, the uh, polymer waveguide mode overlaps with the mode of the silicon nitride waveguide placed adjacently. And the guided mode is then adiabatically coupled to the silicon nitride core. Uh, we came up with this little nice structure called the oxide interlayer that can be made by PCBD deposition and the RIE etching so as to reduce the uh, effective index difference of the silicon nitride waveguide to be close to that of a polymer waveguide at the start and at the end of the taper. And the transition loss was calculated using 3D BPM, and the loss was, uh, and we op optimized the thickness of the oxide interlayer, and the, this loss could be reduced to 0.2 dBs when the residue was about uh, 0.3 microns. And a transfer simulation of the thermal optic phase model layers were performed to determine the required thermal power for pi phase shift. The pi, pi, pi of the given structure was uh, 19.7 milliwatts, and uh, we calculated the transient response. Uh, and, and the response time was about 61 microseconds. And there was no thermal crosstalk between adjacent channels for a uh, channel pitch of 20 microns. And we plan to acquire LiDAR images with only 1D horizontal scanning with the line beam, line shaped beam. In this uh, scheme, we need a SPAD array detector to resolve the beam in vertical direction. And we chose this scanning method because it's much faster compared to the 2D raster scanning that most LiDARs pursue. And for 2D beam scanning, uh, you need uh, grading antennas or uh, tunable lasers, which are other challenges. The two different waveguides were fabricated on a single wafer following these steps. First, the thermal oxidized uh, substrate was prepared and the silicon nitride core layer, layer was deposited using LPCVD. Then the waveguide layer was defined uh, using stepper lithography and I reactive ion etching. And the oxide cladding was uh, deposited and the um, region for polymer waveguide was etched to create this uh, oxide interlayer. And then a fluorinated polyimide solution was being coated um, over the silicon nitride waveguide pattern. And the uh, uh, polymer waveguide was defined by contact lithography and oxygen plasma etching. Uh, the upper cladding was polymer was being coated and cured. And then a microheater was formed on top of the polymer waveguide. The microscopic image here shows the uh, point where two waveguides were aligned. Uh, this is the silicon nitride waveguide and this is the poly polymer waveguide. And you can see the taper uh, narrowing down to the end. And um, you can see the polymer and uh, silicon nitride waveguides well aligned in this uh, cross-section CM image. And then this is the output end phase set of the proposed OPA. And the loss of the uh, adiabatic mode transition was measured from the waveguides with same length, but different transition numbers. We prepared uh, these patterns for a different length and found the slope of each um, taper length. And the transition was, loss was um, 0.2 dBs for taper length over 200 microns. And the measured transition loss matched well with the design results and low, low loss connection between polymer and silicon nitride waveguides were achieved. 
And we characterized our phase modulator with a Maxander interfer interferometer uh, consisting of a silicon nitride input and silicon nitride output. And the polymer waveguide was uh, connected through these uh, tapers as the same as the OPAs. And um, the halfway power consumption was uh, 25.7 milliwatts and the extinction ratio was over 20 dBs. And 10 to 90 uh, response time was measured as 74 microseconds. So uh, a 32 channel OPA was now packaged for demonstration. We pigtailed the chip uh, with an ultra high numerical aperture fiber. And then a cylindrical lens was attached uh, to the end face of the OPA to reduce the vertical divergence of the line beam. Because we don't need a large divergence, a vertical beam size for OPAs, we, do, we reduce the beam size to uh, Beam, beam angle about, about seven degrees. And then the device was packaged on an uh, aluminum uh, case, and then the PCBs were wire bonded. Uh, and here you can see the near field of the 32 channel OPA, and the total throughput of the device was minus 5 dB. Uh, to con uh, conduct the beam scanning experiment, the output uh, beam uh, from the OPA was scattered by the uh, polycarbonate sc screen, as you can see here, and this rear camera was um, observed. To produce the in-phase status of the phase uh, OPA to form a beam like this, a uh, rotating element vector me method was used, and subsequently the beam was scanned horizontally by applying a phase, uh, phase distribution over the polymer phase mod modulators. And this is um, an image of um, letters behind the polycarbonate screen observed by the sphere camera. And to obtain the beam profiles of the far field, uh, the beam power was, was measured using a slit of 30 microns covering an optical power meter uh, placed on a rotation stage. As the beam was steered to the maximum scanning angle uh, of 15 degrees, the main beam power dropped by 1.3 dB, and the side low suppression ratio was uh, about 7.4 dB minus, and the horizontal and vertical beam divergence was uh, 0.8 and 6.8 degrees respectively. So in conclusion, we utilize the strengths of polymer optical waveguides and uh, with superior thermal optic effects and silicon nitride waveguides with a strong model confinement uh, while complementing the weaknesses of each technology. And a uh, law loss connection was achieved between the two waveguides and the uh, 32 channel OPA beam scanner was demonstrated. And our research goes on to the reach goal of demonstrating a 128 channel OPA. And we hope our work inspires further research and development in the field of LiDAR sensors. And thank you for your attention. And